I volunteered to be uh, a leader for the 23rd World Scout Jamboree because I was um, an assistant unit leader for the 21st, which was in 2007 in the UK. Um, and I think I got so much from that experience, not just as an individual, but as a leader as well. And I always knew that my next thing that I wanted to be was, was the unit leader for our unit to a jamboree. So I suppose that was one of the reasons about a year before the um, Jamvi was advertised, lo looking for, for leaders, um, I had for the first time uh, ever taken my troop and actually another neighbouring troop over to Switzerland to Kandersteg, the International Scout Centre. And that was such a, a major achievement, a big step forward. And I learnt a lot of lessons along the way. I wasn't widely travelled. Um, made a lot of mistakes but, but learnt a lot and I just felt very strongly that I could, I had a lot to give to this Cheshire unit from those experiences, very practical experiences. In the beginning uh, we did quite a few joint camps with both uh, Unit 57 and Unit 58. Um, again it was pooling resources, uh, making sure that all the leaders knew each other um, and we did that for six months um, but the important thing was that the four leaders from the unit were working as a coherent team um, because a you're going to be living with each other for three weeks but b you get you've got a 36 young people you've got to look after and irrespective of where they come from you have to make sure that they you know have a fantastic time is about having a really good group of um, of patrol leaders and it go it really goes back to um like it's just a it's just a basic kind of youth engagement youth involvement thing really you've got to be focused on on the young people in your unit and looking for opportunities where uh, they can have an opportunity to lead i was very fortunate to have um a good leadership team in my, in my own scout group so i couldn't be there all the time i couldn't go to certain camps with them i couldn't go on certain parades with them i had to give priority now to what I was doing for the World Scout Jamboree. So my team back at home with the group were fantastic in supporting me and what I was doing. That made a big difference. And then of course, at home, family, friends, all of a sudden, uh, Jamboree became the, uh, the word they heard a lot. Um, so it was very, very vital that that support was there as well to allow you to have all those late nights um, and to, you know, have to have, have time to work on it and prepare. But, but it, was, it was absolutely worth all the effort, a hundred times over, to see that result at the end of it. Um, it it's just incredible. It's, you just can't put it into words what it, what it was like. Uh, personally, I really, really enjoyed home hospitality. Um, I was lucky enough to uh, stay with a Buddhist monk in, in the temple where he lived. Um, so that was a unique experience in itself. Um, we then got to go to Kyoto and have a look around the city and the temples and everything there. Um, we got to go and try out a traditional Japanese bathhouse, eat some very, very good food. Um, so seeing that side of Japan, to me, was so unique because you just never would experience that as a tourist in the country. When we went on home hospitality, specifically where we went in the Mie prefecture, uh, the people could not have been nicer. They were fantastic hosts. Uh, we arrived at our, after a 10, 11 hour coach journey um, to welcome banners. Um, and they really made us feel welcome, even though it was middle of the night. Um, by the time we were finished there, all their greetings, handing over gifts. We went out with our families. In our case, uh, Clive and myself went to a um, el elderly couple with a youngish uh, 30, 35 year old daughter, daughter-in-law and son. Um, and when we arrived there, they said, um, do, you, do you drink? And we went, yeah, we, you know, we'll have a cup of tea. No, no, would you like some sake? So we sat down and had a traditional welcome drink with them with sake. Um, and that was a really nice way of meeting the family. It was quite nice as a leader because actually I think that homestay time was a time where, where you could have a, a bit of an experience. If I was to pick a highlight for me, it would be homestay um, because it was a time where actually just on my own, I had my own 
you know, experience of, of Japanese culture. And that was very different to um, what the other leaders might have had or what some of the young people might have had. And we all had our own unique experiences and opportunities when we were at homestay, um, which actually meant that when we came back together, we had so much to talk about. It was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. Um, we had absolutely no problems at all while we were out there. And everyone, when we gathered together two and a half days later at the train station to get the, tu uh, to get the bullet train to uh, the Jamboree site, they all came beaming, really, really happy, hugging their families, um, you know, exchanging the last few gifts, even as they were leaving, um, and swapping emails, uh, contact details, Facebook and all that kind of stuff, because they wanted to keep contact with each other because they just had a, a brilliant, brilliant experience. So we arrived at the Jamboree <clears throat> and as soon as we stepped off the coach you immediately know your first challenge because the heat was just breathtakingly hot um, and we had to get all these scouts and guides off the coach and just unloading the coach getting these 40 bags off was really draining hard work so immediately you knew that physically this, this was going to be a, a big deal. And then you had your mile and a half, two mile walk from the coach to where we were camping. Um, that in itself was a challenge to try and keep them enthusiastic. Uh, and when they arrived, obviously, to the pitch where we were going to put the tents, um, that is when uh, all the tiredness, all, all of uh, working as a team and all the preparation leading up to the Jamboree really came into its own in the fact that, yes, they had a task to do, they had to get it done, and the challenge was to try and get it done before it went dark. Um, over and above that, you then had to split up the teams, half had to go and get food, you had to go and get all the tables, you had to go and get all the chairs, so you didn't have your whole unit with you. You had unit members and leaders running all over the place trying to collate everything so that you had everything to start off and, and start the camp. Um, go to bed, day one opens up and a completely whole new challenge in, in, in the life of a Jamboree started. In terms of challenges, just, just little things that you wouldn't have thought about. Uh, waste disposal. In Japan, we set up our, our waste disposal area where we collect the waste. And of course, in the UK, we're used to recycling. And at home, you maybe have two, three bins. And that's fine, so that's how we started off. Uh, but we quickly, quickly realised that in Japan, they go way further than that. Uh, and they actually have 14 different streams of waste separation. So we learnt the hard way because they basically made us empty our sacks out and, and separate further. So we had to quickly adapt the way we operated our camping area so that we had, we didn't have 14, but we segregated maybe, I think it was about eight or 10 different streams um, so that we could, we could sensibly then um, get the way straight to the disposal point every morning and that it was gone, no messing about, no time wasted. Um, so that was something we had to adjust to quite quickly. When they would come back after discussing or doing swaps with other members from other countries and come and say, oh, I found this and I managed to swap this for a woggle or I managed to swap um, my crane trousers for a pair of South African trousers, um, and the enthusiasm that that brought uh, in meeting somebody else. Oh, can we bring um, these people along to have a meal with us? Uh, and as a leadership team, we encouraged cultural exchange. So Tokyo for me was a, was a was a celebration. It was di it was different from um, from Jamboree life. It was different from home hospitality. Um, that was about seeing Japan's biggest metropolis, and it was. It was just the most exciting place I've ever been. Uh, two days was not long enough there. Um, we could have uh, could have spent easily easily a week there, if not more. There was there was so much to see, and everywhere you went, it was it was exciting. It was bright lights. There were so many different activities to do. You felt like you were just experiencing little bits of it, and it and it was fantastic. We actually stayed in the um, youth youth centre, um, where where we were in dormitories um, and that was quite a nice change from living in a tent um, but yet we were still we still had the community feel um, 
all the youngsters still congregated in, in any communal areas, discussed, shared, shared their experiences. We were so proud and privileged that, that by that stage, we were confident enough to let those young people go off in very small groups for a whole day on their own. That's how confident we were with them. And to be able to get there um, with such a big responsibility was, was just the ultimate pat on the back all around. Uh, and they did us absolutely proud. They came back having an amazing day out um, and really appreciated that, that we'd given them that opportunity instead of all going round together, which would have been not as good an experience for them. So that, that was the highlight for me. When they walk through that door into the arrivals terminal and the parents have all got banners saying, welcome home, a clapping and applauding and, you know, giving big hugs. It's a very, very emotional experience to the young people. They're happy to see their parents, they're you know, giving big hugs, but then all of a sudden after they've said hello to their parents, they realise they've got to turn around and say goodbye to their unit, to their friends that they've had over the last two and a half weeks. And um, there was lots and lots of tears shed and um, lots of emotion, both for the young people and for us as leaders uh, in that moment. Uh, if you're a leader and you're contemplating applying for the World Scout Jamboree, I'd say, I'd say don't, even, don't even hesitate. Do it. If you're even thinking that that would be something that would be of interest to you, then, then you should definitely apply. But, but don't, underestimate, don't underestimate what it is. I think it's, 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 not, it's not even a week. It's not even a week camp, you know, or, or a two-week camp or a three-week camp. It isn't, it isn't just that. You, you are giving up a significant chunk of your life, and it is a lot of hard work. As an experienced leader in doing two jamborees now, I find it very, very hard to tell other people what a jamboree is like. It's very, very difficult to put it into words. Um, you just end up saying, oh, it's an amazing experience. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity, but it really, really is. It's one of those things you, you can't fully describe until you experience it. Um, so I'd say to anyone that's contemplating it, go and try it. You've got to be prepared to put the work in. You've got, it's no easy ride. There'll be challenges, there'll be difficult times, both before and during the experience. But um, when you get out there, when you experience the things you experience on a jamboree, and when you see the, the young people developing like they do, it makes it all worthwhile. The Japan experience for me has massively changed my views of scouting. Um, I'd only been a one um, foreign trip previous to this, and that was with my own troop. This just opened my eyes that it's a worldwide movement.